good evening, good evening, or should I say good morning or midday, whatever it may be. How y'all doing? Welcome back to End Time Years. I'm finally back. Well, I've been back from my actual vacation, but I guess you can say my vacation from my podcasting and YouTube videos, you know, the whole, you know how it go. You know, I just want to take a little extra time, you know, a little extra break. But uh, I have a lot to talk about. I have a lot of stuff that I want to post. A lot of stuff I want to say. Should I say it? Shouldn't I post it? But it don't matter. But um, welcome back to End Time Is. Yes, it do matter. I'm sorry. I'm my mind gone. You know, it do matter. And whatever you do for Christ going to last. And regardless of what you may, what people may say, what the world may say, Whatever you do for Jesus, it will last. I promise you. If you do it with the right heart, with the right motive, putting God first, it will last. Welcome back to End Time Is. See you in a few seconds. Three. Mm -hmm. Neuralink starts with a surgeon drilling a hole in your head about the size of a coin. Then a robotic arm carefully inserts the ultra-thin, flexible threads into your brain. These threads are finer than a strand of hair and are equipped with electrodes that directly interact with the cells in your brain. This implant is capable of interpreting your thoughts and applying them to real-life actions. Neuralink start automatically raise the temperature of so-called smart thermostats in thousands of homes to help save energy during a heat wave. Most people had no idea that their home temperature had been raised, nor that the power company's ability to do this was outlined in the fine print of their contracts. Now, if this sounds scary, well, it barely scratches the surface of what the World Economic Forum has planned with its smart cities. Today, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about smart cities, including who invented them, where they're being rolled out, when they will be complete, and whether or not the WEF's plans will succeed. Let's start with a definition of what a smart city is. Now, the best definition I could find comes from Wikipedia. It's quite lengthy, but it needs to be repeated because it captures the full scope of what smart cities are. Quote, A smart city is a technologically modern urban area that uses different types of electronic methods and sensors to collect specific data. Information gained from that data is used to manage assets, resources, and services efficiently. That data is used to improve operations across the city. This includes data collected from citizens, devices, buildings, and assets that is processed and analyzed to monitor and manage transportation systems, power plants, utilities, water supply networks, waste, criminal investigations, schools, libraries, hospitals, and other community services. Smart cities are defined as smart both in the ways in which their governments harness technology as well as in how they monitor, analyze, plan, and govern the city. In smart cities, the sharing of data is not limited to the city itself, but also includes businesses, citizens, and other third parties. End quote. In short, then, a smart city is a place where everything you do is tracked and managed by the government, including what you do at home. This is possible because almost every single modern home appliance has internet connectivity, not just thermostats. Fridges, microwaves, TVs, cars, and even home entry systems are all connected these days. In other words, smart cities are the dictionary definition of... Well, if you thought that was crazy, then get ready for Tolosa, a $400 billion proposed smart city in the United States. Announced in September 2021 by former Walmart executive and billionaire Mark Lohr, he outlined his vision for a 5 million person new city in America. Tolosa will be 150,000 acres with a massive skyscraper at its center, a city where commutes are just 15 minutes, 
buildings are covered in lush greenery and gas-powered vehicles are banned. Telosa will be 100% efficient and sustainable. Sound familiar to the line? By 2030, the first phase of construction will cover 1,500 acres and house 50,000 residents at an estimated cost of $25 billion. The total project will likely exceed $400 billion and the city will reach its target population of 5 million within 40 years. Do you think it will be a success? We've talked about this technology in the past, but now it's actually getting deployed. All right, let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon out with a big announcement today on its Palm payment technology. Yahoo Finance's Brooke De Palma has a story for us. Brooke, we've talked about this technology in the past, but now it's actually getting deployed. Right, absolutely. We talked about this technology earlier this year with Panera Bread, a CEO, Panera Brands CEO, rather. They uh, rolled this out at two of its locations. But the top story today, Amazon rolling this out at all 500 plus Whole Foods locations. So essentially, how can shoppers sign up? Well, they can go on their Amazon account, use their credit or debit card, put in their mobile number, and essentially go to Whole Foods, scan their palm, and they're enrolled. Pretty easy there. But in addition to that, of course, other locations that offer this technology includes a baseball field used by Colorado Rockies MLB team. They use this technology to get a gauge on ages for uh, their customers and their fans. And the Whole Foods Market Chief Technology Officer really saying here that Amazon One is a complete convenience play. And since they enrolled this technology, which is now available in about 200 locations currently. Uh, customers essentially have loved the convenience factor of this. Of course, Amazon stock down today, but this news rolling out by the end of this year to all 500 locations at Whole Foods. And Brooke, I gotta say, whenever I go to Whole Foods, I, I'm always tempted. I don't, I'm not enrolled in this currently, no, I'm but I'm always tempted, tempted to put this in. <laughs> like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, so certainly something ID. I'm gonna be looking into. And he doesn't need money. In fact, much of what he needs to get through the day is <laughs> hidden right there, just below the surface in his hand. You like to touch it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, it's yeah. like a grain of rice. Yeah, a grain of rice. Embedded in his hand is a microchip that serves as his keys, his ID, and his wallet. Yeah, it's all in chip, so I use it like to get around the building. Buy snacks. Yeah, exactly. Let's buy some snacks. Exactly. So I can't open it? No. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to First blip my chip and it will log me in mm -hmm. and from there I get access to the fridge. Popular TV shows like Black Mirror have imagined chips as part of a dystopian future. Install ingrained procedure with local anesthetic and you're good to go. In Sweden, the microchips are already here. The microchip implants use the same technology that's in contactless credit cards which have made cash pretty much obsolete in Sweden. No cash. At this tech fair, a chipping event for those on the cutting edge, merging their hands with this new technology. I thought it would be fun, right? The process is simple and swift. A pinch of the skin, and in a matter of seconds, the chip is inserted. The transformation is complete. As for the pain... I barely felt it. But even in this nation of early adopters, not everyone is racing to get chipped. Feel less human. I will feel like a robot. I think, I mean, it's so much more data can go into this, you know, when it's in your body. There's no central registry tracking how many people are chipped, but biohacker Hannes Wellblood estimates between five and 10,000. In the future, do you think everyone is going to be chipped? I think it'll be voluntary, but I am certainly convinced that millions of people will find it very, very valuable to have a smart device under their skin. Human microchipping may be our future, but in Sweden, it's already reality. Sarah Harmon, NBC News, Stockholm. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down Excuse here. Me, right. And chip click on any of the videos. It's a type of technology here. that can do many things, one of them being opening a door. It also opens our bedroom door, as well as our office, as well as the drawers in our office. Our closet is chipped, and this is really cool. We can chip all of the doors. Look, look at it. We can even lock up our towels. See, we also chipped the gym. And the elevator. What the tech? Oh, whoops, it was already unlocked. Ta-da. We've also chipped the hallway and the cinema room. We also entertain a lot. 
So having a door and a door over there helps because we're able to lock it if we have parties and we don't want people to go on specific sides of the house. All it really is is a form of technology that we can program to do cool things around our house. Well, we've heard what my guests uh, feel are benefits of human microchipping, but what about the concerns? Joining us on stage is Michelle Dennity, CEO of Privacy Code, Inc., and partner at Provatus Consulting, who is concerned about consumers' privacy. What are the concerns uh, about human microchipping? Yeah, so I think it's really important first to really define what do we mean by security w and what do we mean The WEF mean has created called C40. Um, and it's called C40 Cities. I would urge you to certainly look on the internet about it and then go to all of the TikTokers and see what they're really, really saying. Basically, you won't be able to drive a petrol or diesel car anymore. You'll have to buy electric. Um, if you want food, you will get a calorie controlled system sent to you by text saying, this is what you can eat today. This is what you can have today. If you violate any of these things, they will freeze your bank account. That is the next step. These are stages in which they're going to implement this stuff. And this was signed up by the WEF. And the WEF has signed up with our, our mayor in London as the chair. And he has gone around the world to communicate this C40 to all of the countries in the world. And most of the countries are looking at adopting it. Now, I am going to abolish it. It, it is a, a hopeless position we are going to be in an open prison, or shall we say a COVID, for the rest of our lives. We, we will not be able to work unless it's in our 15-minute city. It's diabolical. It's not a right... This is not the right thing. And it's been hidden hello, hello. from Welcome the public. No one's talking about Sean, it. Better known as plain old brother Sean. You know, they call me Pastor Evans in some places, but I'm just brother Sean. But welcome back to End Time Media. Uh, I see a whole bunch of stuff that's taking place in the Earth realm. Uh, the enemy is disguising himself, and he's trying to um, deceive men and, and people and make them believe that it's not him, um, but it's God that's doing everything, or or it's God just whooping us. But it's some stuff that is it is him that he's actually showing up at certain places. He's actually uh, deceiving people, uh, coming against the Christians coming against what's right, which is God, which is holy. And we just got to learn how to just walk by faith and have a spirit of what you call discernment and being able to discern the time, like the sons of Issachar, being able to look at the, you know, the, the, the heavenlies and the surroundings of our area and being able to look through with the, look through the, look at mere natural things and what's going on in society with the eyes of faith. And begin to discern it and begin to say, okay, this is this, this is God, this is not God, this is Jesus, this is Satan. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> and being to have and, 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 and allow God to give us the spirit of discernment in a kingsly way. You see what I'm saying? You know, we, we have to learn that we have to put on the mind of Christ. The the when you put on the mind of Christ and you begin to cast down every imagination, every thought that rises up against the knowledge of God in your mind, then you as you begin to put on that mind and begin to walk in that mindset of Christ, then you will be able to discern the times and the season accurately and soundly by the infinite of the Holy Spirit, by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when, when you do everything through the Holy Spirit, through God, through Jesus, then you want nothing like just creep up on you and let's God allow it. You see what I'm saying? That's God testing you or some, you know, the devil is trying to use some different format and he can't really do nothing different. You know, the Bible says nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> so we have to be able to stand our God, get in God's word, pray, you know, pray, study, seek his face fast. You see what I'm saying? This is the what fasting does. Fasting keeps your flesh at bay. They won't make you susceptible for temptation. You see what I'm saying? Um, even if temptation come, even if thoughts come. You see what I'm saying? The enemy desire is to snare us up, to deceive us, to get in our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. But uh, but if we walk in God and begin to put God first, begin to put Jesus first, begin to seek, begin, but 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 begin begin to you know to seek out sound doctrine by by studying the word of God and line up on line, precept on precept, right and dividing the word of truth. 
A lot of the stuff that people are teaching, a lot of the stuff that people are preaching is not God. They call it God, but it's not God. Remember what New Age Doctrine is. New Age Doctrine is it's the underbelly for Satanism. Uh, you can't commit sin. Uh, stop telling people. I don't know why people are starting to tell people, okay, well, you know, you, you you can't commit no sin. There is no right or no wrong. The devil is a lie. That's witchcraft and sorcery. Um, people are actually using sorcery. People are actually getting crystals with necklaces, you know, putting charms on it, you know, you know, they're actually taking these actual uh, uh, apparatuses, <clears throat> excuse me, and beginning to actually summon spirits onto these, these, these charms. Why they call them charms? We do like to call them charms. You know, um, they're actually trying to begin to seek out you know what I'm saying? These my experience from the, you know, in, in afterlife, you know, in the spirit world, you know, in the spirit realm. You know, I mean, these are actually everyday living people. You know what I'm saying? You know, on, on every level, from the rich folks to the poor folks. You know what I'm saying? People are trying to uh, seek spiritual truths, but they're doing, they're going out, they're going outside of the Bible, or the corners of the church or the, or the church world, and they're going into the, to the, uh, to the, uh, the spirit world or the, uh, uh, witchcraft and sorcery world, they're going into those corridors, you know what I'm saying? Well, they actually seek, seeking mediums or, 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 uh, people that, uh, are voodoo priests and people that do Wicca and, and, and all different types of, uh, charms and, and, and enchantments, you know, they, they actually are seeking this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get ahead, trying to get, you know, trying to better themselves, you know, uh, uh witchcraft, it's wrong. You see what I'm saying? Uh, sorcery is wrong. All that's wrong. You see what I'm saying? The ancestors never saved me. You see what I'm saying? The ancestors are, you know, and, and we call them ancestors. They're just ancestors. They are just people that were before us. They probably died with a lot of knowledge and information, but all that knowledge and information, sometimes all them ancestors weren't saved. A lot of ancestors wasn't living a godly lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, we 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 go into what you call the the doctrine or the avenue of what you call anyism. You see what I'm saying? Worshiping nature, worshiping the universe. Nature never saved me. The universe never saved me. Jesus saved me. The creator of the universe, the creator of nature. Come on, talk to me. You see what I'm saying? My blackness don't save me. The melanin in my skin, what it do for me? Nothing. I'm just it's just a pick with my skin. White folk, black folk, Chinese folk, uh, red, blue, whatever. It don't save you. Your color, your skin don't save you. It don't make you no special person because you Hebrew. I mean, don't get me wrong. God chose the Hebrews. Now they are God anointed. You know, children on in the earth realm. We are God anointed children too. But in Christ, the Bible said there is no born man, no free man, no Jew, no Greek. Let's break this down now. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, all my people that are what you call black Hebrew Israelites, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Most of us can't speak Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my Aryan brotherhood that think that they, they're pure white skin is going to save them and they're a pure white driven nation. No. Uh, black folks think that they, they black skin going to save them and they met in their skin and all the black folks are Hebrew. No. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, shamanism, which comes from Native Americanism, uh, all these different cultures. We got to remember, most of this stuff is dealing with culture. Another word for culture is a cult. You see what I'm saying? So we got to understand that we can't be bound by what you call, or, we, or what we call dealing with occultism. We have to break away from that. Um, even they, the enemy is so slick now. He's cutting. He's using stuff to even go into what you call. If if you notice the music, how it's perverse now. <clears throat> you have what you call uh, strippers and uh, prostitutes and all these different uh, women that, that are, are sex workers are trying to make albums now. You got you got to understand. If you look at their background, you know what I'm saying. Some of these women are in sorcery. Some of these women are uh, used to be prostitutes. Some of these women used to be, you know, and, and uh, used to be turned, you know, did all different types of sexual sins. And what I mean by that, like stripping, pornography, the sex world, sex industry. And it's amazing how that, that how we look, you know, we, you got to understand when, when you look at the spirit world, how those spirits can can go over into this new genre they are beginning to deal with, which is what you call music. Music is a doorway. So what? 
type of music are they producing? Sexual perverse music, uh, music that, that they can cause or, or they can make stuff or, or, or titillize your, your 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 sexual desires. Where it, it, it'll tempt you, it'll put you in the mindset of being tempted or or, or, or you doing a uh, uh, sexual or uh, uh, perverse things, perverseness. You see what I'm saying? So we gotta look at that. Then you know, then you gotta look at how how the anti the spirit of antichrist is being rampant. You see what I'm saying? How is this destroying our youth? And all different types of factors, sexually, mentally, physically. You see what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know, electronic bondage. Everything is getting set up for the Antichrist. Our time is running out. If you see it, if you see how society is, our time is running out. Okay, yeah, the, the house ain't gonna save you. The new car is all this stuff is good. I, I I I thank God for my new home. I thank God for you know the uh, the house and the and, and new cars coming and all that right there. But it's not gonna save me though. It's not gonna deliver me when when stuff when I I do have money, but I I have an unsound mind. You see what I'm saying? I need peace. The Bible said that God should give us peace that should pass our understanding. When I'm dealing with issues, when I'm dealing with but you know with all different types of rebellion and all different types of of issues that the enemy come and attack me with. See, my basic stuff I may have already conquered, but then I have other issues. You see what I'm saying? And so the enemy will exploit it and begin to begin to disturb my peace or begin to disturb my mind. Or he'll try to get in there by trying to attack me. You see what I'm saying? Through mentally. You see what I'm saying? And the same asylum is full of folk. All different type of folk. White folk, black folk, Korean, who you, you name it. You see what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people are giving up. Even people are committing suicide or or they have a a, a spirit of murder or, or they have, you know, they, they can't uh, hold jobs or they can't, you know, deliver. But the thing about it is the Bible said we can do all things through Christ. We strengthen us. The word of God is the unadulterated word. It's it's the the word of God is 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 our lifeline. It's our it's our fiber of our being that should be in us. You know what I'm saying? We in it. And we are in it, and it is in us. We should begin to go through the three levels of faith. My pastor was preaching about Sunday about about receiving faith supernaturally through God. The second one is uh getting faith through observing, watching, studying. You see what I'm saying? Praying. You see what I'm saying? And, it, and then the third one is, is begin to infill the Holy Spirit by letting the, by letting, letting faith get in us and, and, and uh, by, by praying and by studying the Word of God and letting the Holy Spirit endow us with faith. You see what I'm saying? Praying. The, how do we believe about our most holy faith? By praying the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? We got to go, you know, and, and then it's many other levels of faith. You know? But and, and and then you know and those faiths should be based on the word of God, sound doctrine. Stop going out here doing all this old crazy stuff. You see, what I'm saying stop. You know, stop trying to you know deceive people to, to try to get a quick word. You know, what I'm saying to try to get more folk in your church. You said that ain't gonna work. Just preach what the what God, what the Spirit of God give you, and sit down somewhere. Stop, stop trying to be, you know, what you're not. If you if you are if you are a teacher, be a teacher. If you are a preacher, be a preacher, be a minister. If you are evangelist, be an evangelist. If you are a pastor, be a pastor. If you are apostle, so on, bishop, so on. You see what I'm saying? But but if you notice, one thing that we have all forgotten, ministers, preachers, young, old, we are servants of God. You see what I'm saying? My pastor taught me you have to learn how to serve the people. Stop trying to serve yourself. Serve Jesus. Serve the people. Be a good servant. That's what God all called us to do is to be a good servant. To be a good layman. You see what I'm saying? And begin to seek Jesus like never before. So I just want to give you a quick snippet. You know what I'm saying? You know, a quick word. You know, uh, I hadn't posted in a while. Well, well, you know, this is, you know, just let this. I, I got stuff, most stuff coming. Uh, don't forget to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the season. This is the time. Regardless of you to my, I won't wait till I get myself right. You will never get yourself right. Only Jesus can get you right. The Bible say the the, the Bible say in Romans nine ten, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That's Romans ten out of ten. Go over with that with me. Say thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Then pray a sinner's prayer. Lord God, forgive me for I, I am a sinner. I confess I'm a sinner and I receive you is my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. So if you went over that quick prayer, 
you know, and begin to go over that sinner's prayer and begin to give a prayer, thanksgiving, begin to thank God that He saved you and fill you with the, fill, ask Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Don't don't allow the enemy to 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 to, to take your life or to take everything that belongs to you. These people these these people are suddenly sold for the to the to the devil. They are cashing in. They 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 are selling their soul. They 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 doing every and everything to to get fame and fortune, to get riches and to get notoriety. That ain't gonna save you. Your 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 biggest reward is gonna come when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you live you live a saved lifestyle. And if you go to a local assembly, get to go to a a a, a church that's preaching sound doctrine, not formality. Mmm. And so you know the Bible, the uh, uh, the, the Bible say the scriptures say that uh, we have a form of godliness, but we yet the now and the power thereof. Mm. We can't we can't deal with formality. We can't just deal with you know. We have to begin to die to our flesh, to die to ourselves. Begin to go on fasting and praying. Begin to seek God's face. Begin to pray. Begin to study and live saved. So I just admonish you, and I leave you with these few little nuggets. You be blessed. End time mirrors is very strong and alive. I just took a little break, even after my little vacation. We had a beautiful time, me and my wife and my baby, and we uh we just we had a good time, and God blessed us. And I'm looking forward to taking many more vacations. I be looking forward to just being blessed and walking in Christ. So you be blessed, and uh, until then, uh, welcome back to End Time Mirrors. This is your host, Brother Sean, and you be blessed. I bid you Godspeed in Jesus' name. Amen.